this on, man. I'm on. Here. Sorry. <clears throat> Technology. Can I borrow that machine to mute him later? Stand there and look pretty. became sin, who knew no sin, that we might become his righteousness. He humbled himself and carried the cross, oh, so amazing, love so amazing. Messiah, name above all names, blessed Redeemer, Emmanuel, the rescue for sinners, the ransom for hell.
Good morning. morning. Happy Easter. Easter. (laughs) Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Thank you so much for being here on this beautiful Easter morning. Uh, Thank you to those who are present. A special welcome to those who are here for the first time or those who are visiting. We are so glad that you chose to be with us this morning. Welcome to those who are joining us via live stream. Happy Easter to you, and thank you for taking part in this special service with us on this beautiful day that the Lord has made. I hope everyone's managed to get a flower. If not, um, please feel free to pick one up. They're out there in the narthex and come up during our praise time and and help beautify this most beautiful cross and uh, enjoy that. At this time, I invite you all, if you will stand together, we'll start praising God through music. All right, this is a toe tapper, hand clapping, hand raising kind of song. So, do a quick mic check, 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 check,
we say amen, you shout out amen, okay? We're going to cheer. There's um, one other announcement um, this morning. Oh, good morning. Um, it is um, after the service, there's going to be a, an egg hunt. And you'll just follow this lady in the white hat right down here, um, the children as you go out from here. Let us bow our heads in prayer this morning. Dear Heavenly Father, You've prepared the way for us to join here in this room and on live stream virtually. We come to worship you and honor your Holy Son, Jesus. Enable us to consciously rest, breathe easy, and find peace from all the world's distractions. Pour out your Holy Spirit on all those who are gathered here and all those who are participating virtually and watching. We ask, and we ask for a special anointing of your Holy Spirit upon Pastor Edie as she delivers her sermon this morning. This past week, we've celebrated and remembered the path Jesus took on his way to Jerusalem on his journey to the cross. Help us to envision his patience and endurance under such extreme circumstances that he faced being tortured and hung on that tree, the cross to die. Touch our hearts, Lord, with the true meaning of this ultimate sacrifice your Holy Son Jesus made for us. And we thank you, Father, for your all-encompassing love as a father, allowing your son to step in and die for us so we might find a new life 
Lord, we confess that we are no saints. We do sin. But thanks be to you, when we are convicted of our sin and recognize we need to repent, you freely forgive when we ask for forgiveness. Any of us, all of us, you love all of us. And just as Jesus was lifted on the cross, he delivered us from sin, death, and darkness. Transform us just as you transformed in the resurrection, revealing your power over sin and death. Lord, let your light, hope, and love continually fill our hearts and minds. Enable us, as we go into the world, to be examples of your love to others as well as a light and a hope in someone else's darkness. Give us a new purpose and new energy to overcome the negativity and darkness and show your light and your love in the world. Lord, there's so much for us to be thankful for, the beautiful weather, the love of family, whether it's biological or otherwise, friends, loving pets, safe travels, new babies, and are there others in the congregation you'd like to lift up thanksgivings or praises or prayers? What a blessing be out of a coma and then have your family together. Any others? thanksgivings and praises. There are so many things in the world happening today which we don't have any control over. And Lord, hear our prayers and petitions for those. Be with all those people who face uncertainty on a daily basis. And Lord, give them strength and endurance to remain hopeful and diligent in their struggles. Lord, increase our faith, all of our faith, Fill each of us with hope and the knowledge that you will never leave us or forsake us. We also ask for prayers for those who are sick, for those who are taking care of them. All those who've suffered loss of loved ones, those who suffer from mental illness, addiction, there's so many things. Lord, but we know that you are in this world and you are there with us and that you do hear our prayers. And now, join me as we say the Lord's Prayer, the prayer Jesus taught his disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now we'll have our children's sermon. If Delane McDonald is going to be coming up. And our children, if you'll come up to the front. sit right here in front of them? Is that all right? Is it on? Yep. Oh.
Hello. Uh, good morning, everybody. Could, will you sit right here next to him? Do you mind? This is great. All right, so I want to know everybody's name. So I'll start with you. Say it again. Charles. Grayson. Chandler. Camden. Charlotte. Witt. Holden. Wyatt. And Bo. And I'm Miss Delane. And I want you to tell everybody out here, I just want you to shout out, good morning, hallelujah, it's Easter. Got me? Ready? On the count of three. One, two, three. Good morning, hallelujah, it's Easter. Now tell me what you know about Easter. What do you know? If you're safe into this mic. It's the time Jesus died on the cross. Exactly, very good. All right, what else do you know about Easter? Anything, tell me. Yes. He, say it again. He's risen from the dead. Woo! That is the truth. Hallelujah. Anything else? What else do you know? Thanks so much. Why do we have these flowers on the cross? Because a lot of this season it's been draped in a cloth, hasn't it? So why do you think you put beautiful flowers on it? Yes, to show that something special happened, that new life, because those flowers represent new life, right? Something springing forth has happened on this special day. Now, this is a special bag that has some things in it that I'm not even sure what's in there, but you're gonna look with me. And on it, you can see some other scenes of God's promises. What is this? A rainbow. And a rainbow is a promise of God's love, isn't it? And then we've got the dove that showed Noah that there was dry land. And then on this side we do have a cross and the butterfly. Another symbol of new life. Nice, nice. All right, let me see what's in here. Oh, there's some prizes too, so I've got some bracelets for you. Oh, I've got eggs. Those should have been in the refrigerator, shouldn't they? Should these have been in the fridge? No, they're, how do you know? They might be real. They rattle. <laughs> yes, we're in trouble. Have any of you ever seen these before? These are called resurrection eggs. And inside each one is a story about, part of the story of how we go from last week with Palm Sunday to today with Easter. So I'm going to have each one of you take an egg, and there's something inside, and I want you to be ready to tell us what you know about that, okay? And if you don't know, you just go, I don't know, and then we'll all help you, okay? Fair enough? All right, grab an egg. 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 An egg. Whoop. An egg. An egg. All right. Now, I have no idea what eggs you selected because, you know, well, I don't know. So it's a surprise, like a lot of life is. All right, so let's start with you. Let's open your egg. And what do you have in it? A wet. Will you stand up and show everybody in the congregation? Just turn around and hold it up. He says it's a whip. Now, what do we know about a whip in the Easter story? They, they did. They were not kind to Jesus, were they? Right. They were very cruel, and they beat him. So that represents the passion of Christ uh, to do that for us. Did you open your egg? What is that? Is there something in there? Yeah. Why don't you open it up so we can all see it? Okay. Oh, stand up and show everybody what you've got. Hold it high. And how, is that a special kind of cross? Um, how is it created? What do you see there? It's like there's a nail on it. Yes, and those are nails. What do you know about the nails on the cross? Um, they um, they look like egg yolks. Like yes. Do you think that was probably painful for Christ? Yeah. Yes, very. But great love for us, he died. Let's open yours and see what you've got. 
All right, you know the routine. Stand up, show everybody what you got, please. Now, what is that? He's not sure. Can we help him? What is it? And it's white. And when they laid Jesus in the tomb, what did they do? They wrapped him up, didn't they? So that white cloth represents the body of Jesus after they put him in the tomb. Thank you very much. All right? Now, I'm going to save you for last. There's a reason, okay? Because you already said, what did you say about your egg? Well, no, don't tell anyone. We'll keep it a secret. Open yours. Oh, that was dramatic. Will you stand up and do it dramatically here? Okay, you're going to do it so everybody can do it just like you did it then. Oh, okay, and what's in it? You have to turn around and show them. What is this? And what are they doing? They're praying. They're praying. And did Jesus pray um, on the journey of his week before his death? Yeah. Do you remember where he prayed? Uh, that's a very good guess. What, what do you know? The Mount of Olives is a very good guess, but it was a garden. Does anybody remember that fancy name? What was it? Gethsemane. Everybody say Gethsemane. Gethsemane. Yeah, you'll remember that later on. Thank you very much. All right, Chickadee, come up here. Walk right over here. Now, you're a little bit like me. We're a little bit shorter than most. All right, so show them what you've got. Hold it up. What is that? Okay, let's hold it up so everybody can see. Guys, help her out. What is that? A spear. A spear. And do you know anything about the story of Jesus and what happened with the spear? Um, that they said the spear did not affect the... Yes, and to his side, didn't they? It was not a good time for Jesus. So why did he go through all that suffering? To pay for our sins, right? Will you open that up, please, and let's see what you've got. Stand over here so everybody can see. Oh, that's an important one. Do you know what that is? Well, hold it up so everybody can see it. Does anybody want to guess? What is this? A stone. It was a stone. What do we know about a stone? It was rolled across. It is hard. That's a very good answer. And it was heavy, but they moved it away from the tomb, didn't they? which was amazing in itself. Very cool. Thank you very much. And you, sir, let's stand up and see what you've got. Oh, you've got a very important one. Donkey. Yes, and tell everybody what that is. The donkey. And what do we know about the donkey from last week? Yes, tell us. Jesus Say this. Say it into the mic. This one. Speak. Jesus rode into it. Jesus rode into Jerusalem on the donkey. And what did they say just last week on Palm Sunday? What did the people say? Hosanna. Oh, I said you sang it. Yes. Hosanna in the highest. But sadly, by the end of the week, what were those people saying? Crucify him. And that brings us to you, which you have the most important egg in some way. Will you open your egg and show everybody? Show everybody. What's wrong with, what's up with that egg? There's nothing in it. Why? Because it represents that Jesus was gone. Yeah, will you say that so everybody can hear your voice? It represents that Jesus was gone. Yes. And where was Jesus gone? He had risen from the dead, which means God wins. Everybody say, God wins. God. Yes, he does. Hallelujah. Now, if you will, please, I'll have to have these eggs back. But after the service, there are already loads of eggs hidden back here. You'll follow me. There's chocolate. There's prizes. There's all kinds of good stuff. And so right now, though, I want you to say a prayer with me. I want you to repeat after me. So will you do that with me? Okay. Dear God, Dear God thank you for this day. Thank you for this day. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. We praise, we praise your name. Lord, thank you, Lord, thank you. For, loving us so much for loving us so much that you reached out your arms and died for our sakes. In thy precious name we pray. Amen. Amen. Now, wait a minute. Hands in. 
Now on three, everybody's going to say, go God. Ready? One, One two, two, three. Go, go God. God. Love you. See you later. Bring me your eggs, okay? Yeah, thanks. And now if you'll join us with our morning offering. If the ushers will please come forward. Let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, accept these gifts that your people have given you. Use them for the, your kingdom, for helping other people and our churches. Lord, and we ask also that you um, bless each of the givers and each of the receivers. In Christ's name, amen. And please stand. What? No. Okay. If you have a desire to come up and lay something at the feet of Jesus, the altar is open always. was laid in darkness. 
battle in the grave. The war on death was waged. The power of hell forever broken. The ground began to shake. The storm was rolled away. His perfect love could not be old. Now death where is your sting? Our resurrected King has rendered you defeat.
Our scripture lesson today comes from the um, Gospel of Luke, chapter 24, verses 1 through 12. If you would like to follow along in your pew Bible, it's on page 84 in the New Testament. But on the first day of the week, at early dawn, they came to the tomb taking the spices that they had prepared. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they went in, they did not find the body. While they were perplexed about this, suddenly two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. The women were terrified and bowed their faces to the ground, but the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here but he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still in Galilee that the Son of Man must be handed over to sinners and be crucified, and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered his words and returned from the tomb. They told all this to the eleven and to all the rest. Now it was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary, the mother of James, and the other women with them who who told this to the apostles. But these words seemed to them an idle tale, and they did not believe them. But Peter got up and ran to the tomb. Stooping and looking in, he saw the linen cloths by themselves. Then he went home amazed at what had happened. This is the word of God for the people of God. Would you pray with me? God, your love for us costs so much. Thank you for doing for us in Jesus Christ what we could never do for ourselves. Thank you for turning towards us so that we could turn toward you and be redeemed. We love you and we bless you. Now let the words of my mouth And the meditation of these, your people's hearts, be acceptable in your sight, for you are our strength and our redeemer. In Christ's name we pray, amen. It's Easter, the day when everything changed. On every Easter Sunday, we tell the old Easter story, which is ever new and ever renewing. Easter is about a new start, a new creation, a new life. It's about the amazing work of God in raising Jesus Christ from the grave, who opened to us the way to the kingdom of God. The resurrection is such an amazing story. It's hard to capture the experience. Luke's gospel version tells us it happened early at dawn. Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and other unnamed women came to the tomb. They brought the spices and ointments they had prepared to anoint the battered, bloodied, beloved body of Jesus. Because he had no tomb of his own, his body was taken down from the cross and placed in a tomb borrowed from Joseph of Arimathea. By then the wounds on his head where the crown of thorns had been pressed down brutally into his flesh and the wounds in his hands and feet where they had been nailed, pounded into the cross. And the gash in his side where the soldier's spear had been thrust to verify he was really dead. These wounds had all clotted and staunched. 
His corpse had been wrapped in linen cloth and placed in the tomb on Good Friday. The woman had made sure to see where his body was laid. They returned as soon as they could, according to the commandment, after a restless, sleepless Sabbath Saturday's rest. Up to this point, the Easter story is a rather ordinary tale, unremarkable, though tragic. Crucifixions happened frequently of both guilty men and innocent ones. There were two men, as you recall, one on each side of Jesus who were crucified at the same time he was. All the women knew who came to the tomb was that death seemed to have the last word. Perhaps some of us here this morning are feeling a weight of sorrow, pain, grief. Some of us are facing days and nights that are dark and heavy. Some here know what it means to be weighed down by brokenness, to be restless and sleepless. Our brokenness may be due to our own faults, mistakes, and sins. Our hurt may be due to circumstances, actions, or inactions beyond our control. Whatever the cause, despair, death of hopes and dreams, may seem to have the last word. Right now, you may be in a state of lament and know little of Easter joy. Life is full of Good Fridays. Some have said we live in a Good Friday world. Even Jesus acknowledged that in this world, you will have troubles. Pastor King Duncan shares the true story about Marshall Shelley. Shelley was editing the notes for what would become the Quest Study Bible when his wife gave birth to their first child, a daughter who was severely challenged both mentally and physically. Shelley, who was then editor of Leadership Journal for Pastors and a respected Christian leader, faced another test of faith 18 months later when a second child was born and who lived for only one minute. And then six months after that, his first child died. It didn't matter that she had disabilities. There was an enormous hole in his heart. Shelley says by the time, by that time he was full of some honest and hard questions for God. We can understand that. You've had those same questions if you've watched a loved one suffer. Marshall Shelley asked those questions of God. Afterward, he said, God's not offended by our asking questions. In fact, God invites it. We don't know how God renewed Marshall Shelley's faith after those two tragedies, but God did. And friends, your faith, your faith can be renewed too. Perhaps on this Easter, it feels like you are still in Good Friday. That's okay. That's part of the fabric of human life. It is especially when darkness and death seem to have the upper hand that it's imperative we confidently proclaim Christ is risen. The Easter story is not an idle tale. The women were the first witnesses. They witnessed that one to two ton stone 
blocking the entrance, was rolled away from the tomb. When they went in, they witnessed the tomb was empty. Perplexed by it all, they did not know what it was they were witnessing. Their confusion turned to terror when two men in dazzling clothes stood beside them. They were so frightened, they bowed their faces to the ground, but their terror turned to joy. When the angel said to them, why do you look for the living among the dead? He is not here, but has risen. Remember how he told you that the Son of Man must be crucified and on the third day rise again. Then they remembered Christ's words and they ran to tell the 11 disciples and all the rest what they had witnessed. Remember his words, dear friends, how Jesus told them. Remember how he has told us. Ah, but the women's words seemed to the disciples to be an idle tale. And they did not believe them. Peter got up, ran to the tomb, and witnessed for himself the linen cloths that had been wrapped around the body of Jesus, laying off to the side. He went home amazed at what had happened. The Easter story is an amazing story. What is just as amazing is our presence here this Sunday on the other side of the resurrection. Like all Easter people, we are amazed by the privilege we have of knowing that God is with us. Easter people know that neither life nor death can separate us from God's love. Easter people know Jesus broke the power of sin and death, and that power is ours today. Easter people believe the Easter story because we witness how it's being lived out in our own lives and then the lives of others. Unquestionably, we live in a messed up world today. It's no wonder so many people are filled with hopelessness and despair. So many others are filled with anger and fear. We understand. There are times when even we who are followers of Christ have turned our backs on our faith and on our Lord. There are times we go along just to get along. We're not perfect, but thanks be to God, we are forgiven. We are loved. We are not alone. Therefore, we can live full, unflappable, faithful lives. The world's people desperately need to know the power of the resurrection in their lives today. Easter people, we've got the good news. Let's not keep this amazing story to ourselves. We're not talking about some idle tale, some pie in the sky by and by. No, we are talking about right here, right now, and forevermore. Pastor Billy D. Strayhorn tells about a visit he made to a woman whose husband had died and whose funeral he had done about two months before. It was one of those dark, drizzly days. Pastor Strayhorn wasn't even sure if Emma was home. The house was dark and all closed up. All the blinds and curtains were drawn. He rang the doorbell nothing. He knocked and then heard a quiet voice say, I'll be with you in a minute. Emma finally came to the door. As they walked down the hall to the living room, Strayhorn couldn't help 
But notice, the whole house was dark. It was all sealed up like a tomb. They sat down and went through all the, those first few minutes of formalities you go through when you have guests. And then all of a sudden, Emma burst out with a question for her pastor. Is the resurrection real? She asked. Strayhorn answered, yes. She asked, well, how do you know? They talked about the passages of scripture that dealt with the resurrection. They talked about those scriptures where Jesus foretold his own death and gave us the promise of the resurrection. They talked about how you had to accept it on faith. It was all very biblical and theologically correct. Evidently, it wasn't enough. With a deep sigh, Emma said, I want a sign. Strayhorn told her the only sign he knew about was of the empty tomb. Emma said, that's not enough. I want more than that. As they talked, the rain had been coming down harder and harder. It had gotten even darker. The day seemed to match their moods. Strayhorn himself was depressed. He'd come to help, and he felt like he hadn't done a very good job. Before he left, they prayed, and he prayed for a sign for Emma, something to ease her grief and to help her know the truth of the resurrection. As they walked down the hall, he felt sort of useless because he hadn't been able to reach her. When he opened the door, the first thing Pastor Strayhorn noticed was that it had stopped raining and the sun was starting to peek out of the clouds. The sky off in the east was still dark and stormy, but the western sky was beginning to lighten up. About the same time that he heard the door close, he looked up. And immediately, he turned around and rang the doorbell. The door opened and he took Emma's hand and he pulled her outside and he pointed. They both stood there in stunned silence as they looked on the most beautiful rainbow either one of them had ever seen. It was a full horizon to horizon rainbow. The colors were brilliant. Emma started crying. And then she started laughing. She looked at her pastor and through her tears and laughter, she said, he's alive. She gave him a hug and immediately ran inside, opening curtains and blinds. Aren't you glad that the rainbow appeared in the sky for Emma? Every rainbow is a powerful testimony to the resurrection. You don't have to be a poet or a painter or a rocket scientist to recognize that creation is all too wonderful to have happened by accident. He's alive. All of creation bears eyewitness testimony to the truth of Christ's resurrection. A time-honored piece of humor says that a couple of weeks after the resurrection, someone asked Joseph of Arimathea, why did you let them bury Jesus in your brand new tomb? Joseph shrugged his shoulders and answered, he only needed it for the weekend. Easter people, though there will always be Good Fridays in life, Sunday has come. God loves us so much that God will not leave us in grief or in the grave. 
All who come to Jesus can experience his reality, his grace, his love, his life. Because he lives, it makes all the difference in the way we live. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, let's pray. Almighty and wondrous God, on this Easter day of new beginnings, we offer our praise and proclaim our victory over death. All that you have done is marvelous in our eyes, and so we bless your holy and powerful name. Receive our joyful thanksgiving. Make us alive in Christ that we may serve you with joy. Your message of redemption is given to all the world. Anoint us to preach to the people in every place that death is conquered and Jesus Christ is Lord of all. We rejoice in Easter. We are glad to be yours. Receive what we ask and grant it in your mercy. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. Let us stand and sing. If, if you are able, stand and sing our, our last song of praise and thanksgiving to God before we go forth.
receive the blessing and the sending forth. May God in the risen Christ fill us with all joy and peace in believing through the power of the Holy Spirit. Amen and amen. <laughs> 